Okay. Given this graph, this is me recapping. Given the graph here, graph the radical of it. Graph the radical of it. So let's just talk about the rules we know. I know that there's some invariant points. What's invariant when you square root it? The square root of what is invariant? Zero or the square root of one. So if I ever see a y of zero, the point stays there. So for instance, the coordinate negative four zero becomes negative four zero. It didn't move. The coordinate one zero becomes one zero. It doesn't move. I'm square rooting the y. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm physically doing to my points. Okay, does that make sense? Square rooting the y. And this coordinate, I guess it's not really labeled, but right here, what do you want to say? It's like 1.2 comma 1. Okay, so there's all the invariants. Now let's talk about this. What happens when you square root a negative number? It doesn't work, so guess what? All of those points over there are not going to happen. Okay, let's do that coordinate. What does 3, 4 become? 3, 2. And do you kind of understand what shape is going to happen? A radical shape. Do you see I don't have any arrows because this graph didn't have any arrows? No, because there was no coordinates that would exist in there. Yeah. So if you ever did the domain, your domain would be the number negative 4, and then it would go from 1 to 3. Um, when it's just listing just a number, you can do squiggly brackets like that because it's just giving it a number, not a range of numbers. Oh, yes, sorry, you're right. Is that the bracket you're talking about that I made a mistake on? I was so worried about my other brackets. Okay. Find the domain and range of this. Okay, let's talk about grade 10, because I think you're going to remember that stuff, right? Grade 10, here you go. How did you do that in grade 10? How did you graph something like that in grade 10? Anybody know what shape it makes? The first function you ever graphed? A line. A line. It is a straight line. What does the three tell you about that line? The y-intercept. The y-intercept is three on that line. What else do you know about that line? How do I know where to move, let's say, o over, up? How do you do that in a line? Maybe this would help you ring some things in your head. Do you remember that? Did 
Does anybody know the word for that M? Slope. How do you do a slope of a line? Rise over run. If the number is one, is it okay if I go up one, over one? <clears throat> Ooh, you guys look like grade 10 was a long time ago. Okay, that's the graph of that. Now, what's the graph of the square root? Okay, ready? This, what that? Yeah, because now I'm going to square root it on the top of it. This part of my line, I'm not going to be able to square root because I can't square root negatives. This coordinate here is going to be invariant. Does anybody know what the x value is over there? Think about going 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Where do you get to? Negative 3. <clears throat> this coordinate right here is invariant. I need some like other colors here. And can we move a coordinate with a height of 4 down to a height of 2? Would that be okay? So this coordinate should be 1, 4. I'm going to move it to 1, 2. So there's my answer. I took the height of 0 and left it. I took the height of 1 and left it. I took a height of a 4 and I moved it to a height of 2. The next one? Yeah. I just left it as a pattern. Like I just know that. Oh. So is your arrow going a straight across or is it going up? It's slowly going up because how do radicals move? This is how radicals move. They move up slowly, right? Because this is like 9, 3. And then you have 16, 4. Like you're hardly moving up. Does that make sense? 16, 4. Like look how slowly I'm going uphill, but I am, right? Okay. What's the domain? What's the x value that we went to on the left? Negative 3 to infinity. And what's the range? What's the lowest height? Zero to infinity. Okay. Grade 10. Grade 10. How do you graph that? This time I'm going to da dash it. Okay, it's a line. It has a y-intercept of negative 4. And then I'm going to be going up 1, right 1. Do you understand what this intercept would be if you kept going up one, right one, up one, right one? It would cross there at four. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to square root that. I'm going to square root that graph. So what do I know? Invariant, invariant. Invariant, invariant. Heights of zero, heights of one. What do I know about negative heights? 
they're not going to exist. And then what do I know about my curve from here to here? I'm going to be above it. And then what do I know about my curve after? I'm going to be below it. And I'm always thinking like I know the consistent shape of a radical equation, right? The shape, the shape of a radical. Okay, so this one has a domain from 4 to infinity. Do you notice how the range is often 0 to infinity? Because you can't have y values below 0. Okay, solving algebraic radical equations. Okay, how do you want to solve this? How do you get rid of a square root? Square both sides. Okay, if I square root a square, or square or square root, they cancel, and I get x plus 3, and that equals 4. I'm going to subtract 3, I'm just doing some algebra stuff, and I get an x value of 1. Okay, now, do you see what I did here? What did I do? I moved the 2 over to that side, right? So this graph, I'm going to graph it, and what I should get is, because I moved that to that side, Can you think about your algebra? If you move this to that side, what is that going to equal if I move that? Algebraically, if I moved it, what will it be? Zero. Okay? So now I'm going to graph this equation, and I'm going to look for where is it equal to zero. And you know what it should do? It should it should match that number. Okay, you ready? Where's the starter point? What's our shifts here? We're moving how and how? Left 3, down 2. So can you put a starter point? Left 3 and down 2. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to do a little chart here, over, up, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. Should I do anything to that chart? Do I have any A's or B's? Nope. So I'm going to just do that. So 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. And where did that graph have a height of zero? Look at it, it matched. Our graph ended up having an x-intercept of one. Okay. Solve this algebraically. Okay, so what is your very first algebra move here? We have to do a few things. What do you want to move first? Do you want to do a divide by 2, a square, or an add 4? Which one have to come first? Add 4.
now, did you pick divide by two? Okay, now I'm going to square So x plus 5 Thanks. square, and now I'm going to subtract 5. Okay, let's see what happens when we graph this function. So I'm going to graph this function. I don't have to move anything. It was all on one side. So I'm going to graph that function. Where do you want to place your starter? Where's your starter point? Left 5, down 4. Does that make sense? Left 5, down 4. One one four two nine three. That's normal. Do we want to do anything to that chart? Do you have any A's or B's that might affect it? What is this two? What kind of letter is it? Is it an A or a B? It's an A. It's out front of it. So we're going to be timesing that column by 2, because A, Y, you have to times. Okay, so I'm going to go over 1, up 2. I'm going to go over 4, up 4, over 9, up 6. What did you find out? The x value is of negative 1 on the graph is what made the y be 0. The y is 0 at an x value of negative 1. Okay? The nice thing about this question on your test, your algebra and your graph should match, right? You did something wrong if they're not matching.